Hello, good evening, and welcome to this very, very special webinar. I am so excited about today. This is a webinar, one of its kind, and the first of its kind that we're doing from the OP General Global University. And let me tell you why I'm so excited. Today, I don't have any advice to give you. Today, I don't have any professors, any senior deans, or any academics who are going to talk to you. Instead, we've got four students, all from the graduating class of the General School of Liberal Arts and Humanities. Please, well, please join me in welcoming all four of them. To begin with, we've got Priyadarshini, who comes from Dehradun. Her favorite classes in the liberal arts program are philosophy and institutional economics. She plans to do a master's in economics, although she doesn't know where from. And for some reason, she's really interested in K-pop. There's Mevini from Bangalore, whose favorite subjects at JSLH are literature and political science, which has inspired her to pursue these subjects as her major as well. She's usually found all over campus, cuddling and pampering the campus dogs. And she also seems to have the ability to turn every situation into a funny one. We are joined also by Param from Indore, whose favorite subjects are psychology and anthropology, and he intends in majoring in one of them as well. He's never found in his room, and he's always running around campus doing something or the other. And finally, we've got Tane, a third year student from Mumbai with a major in economics. His two favorite classes at, soci were at, at JSLH were sociology and a course called institutional economics. He has plans of doing his MBA from the Harvard Business School, and he happens to love sushi. These are our four panelists. They are not professors, they are not outside people. They are our very own JSLH students, and they are here today to talk to you about life at JSLH. To begin with, I'd like to start with Medini. Medini, you've been a student of JSLH for, for so long, and you made a conscious decision to, to pursue studies in the liberal arts. Why did you think liberal arts was an option for you, and what does it mean in terms of the COVID-19 scenario that we are in right now? Over to you, Medini. Um, thank you, sir. So when I first left school, I was extremely unsure of what I wanted to do, which field I belonged in, where my interest lied or my passion lied. And this is why I chose liberal arts. Uh, coming to Jindal, being part of the Jindal School of Liberal Arts and Humanity School, it it <coughs> opened me up and uh, you know I, I went through like a wide range of subjects. I studied interdisciplinary, economics, sociology, and I think that this diversity helped build my, uh, you know, helped in giving me like an in-depth understanding of the different social sciences. and. Through this, I was able to sort of, uh, you know, realize that I was actually very interested in political science, which was also one of my favorite subjects. So I have decided to major on political science and international relations. And keeping in mind the current circumstances, I think I'm at a, I am like at an advantage because, you know, like I said, the diversity of the subjects I studied allowed me to enter any field into the job market without actually, you know, like because I've had the background information or the background. Uh, help to do so you know i've been exposed to so many subjects so it's not like you know i, I have to enter a particular field and not know uh, something like writing or researching because i've done it all nice thank you very much medini with that introduction um i'd like to turn to tane and param now guys a lot of our, our our viewers and a lot of our audience are um are in school they might be in class 11 they might be in class 12 and you have faced this and they're about to face this hopefully in the next few months there is a quantum leap that happens between studying at school and moving to college how did you deal with this quantum leap let me start with tane um we could start with perhaps your introduction into uh, the jslh program at jgu and perhaps we could move on to param eventually to figure out what was the first year at the jindal school of liberal arts and humanities like over to you tane um, so coming, sort of entering into JGU was a fairly daunting experience because moving from high school to college, as um, you mentioned, tends to be a slightly, you know, tricky experience. But um, the culture at JGU and at JSLH is extremely inclusive. Um, it tends to focus on making students feel at home. Um, and more than that, I think um, there is a sort of weak buffer before classes start called orientation week of or what we call a J or at JGU buddy project 
Um, I had the um, pleasure rather and the privilege of chairing two of these um, events, which are focused on making students comfortable, making students feel at home, and more than anything, reducing the homesickness, which tends to come in, you know, two days after your parents leave you in the you know, middle of, 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 of Sony Park ground. And um, what I think I would like to point out as a key feature that helped me adjust to, to JDU and JSLH is a culture. Um, I was very fearful of ragging because, I mean, it's known in colleges in India to be a be extremely sort of common phenomena. But I was very, very shocked to see, or rather not shocked, but pleasantly surprised to see that ragging is tolerated by the um, administration or by the student body. Um, the the um, organization has very strict policies against ragging and students themselves don't endorse it in the manner that if a case of ragging were to be found, students themselves would, you know, rise up to the occasion and be like, you know, this is not good or this is not to be tolerated. And the same actually Tana, continues for the staff. Let me just interrupt you there, Tana. So are you suggesting that ragging doesn't happen at all at JGU? And and it's a student body that actually sort of galvanizes and sort of prevents this, this incident of ragging happening. Yes, it doesn't happen at all. I mean, in, in, okay. in my three years at JGU, I haven't seen a single incident. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Param, over to you. Um, obviously, Tana has had a very good experience in, in, in shifting from a, uni, uh, from a school education into a college education. Um, how would you how would you um, recollect your your first year at, at JSLH? So yeah, I'm I'm in my second semester right now. I'm almost done with my second semester, so I've almost completed my first year. So I'm just gonna give you a little retrospective from my first year. So after the body project finished, like we, we we had an academic orientation where like all of us were introduced to the faculty, and it was like really positive. And the faculty introduced themselves and like the courses they take, the electives they take, and everything. And then we started with the classes. So the thing about JSLH is that we start extremely slow at a very slow pace, but then we gradually start gaining the pace and that's an extremely amazing factor because like it helps everyone transition from their school life to college. And the thing about JSLH is that it has, most of the courses have like experiential learning like for a lot of courses like expressive arts, I've, I've had times when we've sang a lot of perspectives. And for a lot of courses like quantitative skills, which require like understanding of the topic, prof uh, <laughs> Professor Arun got like a huge cake and all of us divided into equal parts, fair parts. And then he did not have to pick up the topic again because all of us understood it so well. Another thing about JSLH, a lot of courses like history, expressive arts, ID, and sociology, we go for multiple field trips, which like are related to the course in the end. And like sociology, we went for this field trip not exactly a field trip. We went to Kamani Theater to watch this play called Bayan, which was based on feminism. And we were starting gender and caste that week. So it definitely helped us like, gain more perspective about the topic. Lovely. So what I really find really interesting is that you said that the courses at JSLH, they started off really slowly. Perhaps this was a, 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 a gradual effort of sort of um, weaning you guys away from school education into the university. Yeah, it's great to know that. Um, what's also really interesting is that you mentioned a number of field trips and, and experiential learning, especially, you know, moving into a theater um, to watch plays, etc. Um, now, Medhini, uh, I want to turn to you now, and I want to talk about um, academics in general. Now, we've heard from, we've heard from Tanay and we've heard from, from, um, from Param about their first year and the first few months that they, that they were here. Um, what can you tell us about the academics at 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 JG at, at JSLH? So uh, before I begin, I'd like to say that I'm part of the Student Academic Committee in the School of Liberal Arts, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because the Student Academic Committee focuses on trying to make the academic procedure and the academic process, that's the examinations, assignments, uh, due dates, everything, very flexible, and we act as a bridge between the student body and the faculty. 
So I'm going to speak about the academics of JSLH in a very brief manner, but feel free to reach out to me for any other questions. So we have different yeah. kinds of uh, evaluations uh, you know, during the course of your three years, some professors like to conduct a continuous evaluation. So you have presentations in class, you have simulations in class, uh, you know, you you indulge in debates and discussions, which I have always found very interesting because I'm against examinations. Um, and then again, then again, you have your usual uh, midterm examinations and end term examinations, but it's it's never a stressful process. It's it's what you'd want an examination to be, and it's nothing nothing like a board exam. Um, so, and you know, when you're studying, obviously there are going to be times when there may be, maybe subjects that are difficult or you have issues with, and you may not be able to clear the subjects at your, you know, your first try. Uh, we have a great procedure in place for that also. We have, um, we have a reset uh, structure that we follow where each student is allowed to give the examinations again. Uh, and prior to the reset, we, the students offer tutorials to other students. So maybe say uh, there are some students who are extremely good at math. So they offer their expertise and their assistance to other students who may require it. And this happens through the academic year, not just, you know, right before an exam or during one month. Is that is like a peer to peer learning then. It's like peer to peer learning, which I think is very helpful because one, because you've struggled with the subject, you sort of have like a, you have, you get individual attention. And in addition to that, we are always ab available everywhere. So we are like a WhatsApp text away from clarifying your doubts or anything. Uh, and even before an exam, you know, the the like the peer tutor tutors are always available to calm you down, help you out and everything. And moving on to the course structure that we offer, it's very, very flexible. The professors always, you know, mention their expectations that they have as a class and they allow us also to let them know. So before, usually before our classes, the professor states what she'd like to teach through the rest of the semester. And, you know, we sort of, we are allowed to, you know, given our inputs or our, our perspectives to so say, I want to study the impact of uh, social media on Indian politics. She or he will be more than happy to incorporate that into the existing curriculum, which I think is brilliant because that is what liberal arts or a liberal arts education stands for. You know, you, but you study what you want to study. Let me just interject here. Um, you mentioned that a lot of these professors are flexible in terms of, um, you know, uh, in how the courses and the curriculum is structured. Isn't that a problem in a large class and different students might have different ideas as to how the curriculum could be structured or how large are your classes really? So we are actually not a large uh, class. We are usually 20 in a class between to 20 to 25, which is a very good amount because one, the professor within be it like a one point like one and a half hour class or a three hour class there's enough ample time for discussion and there's also ample time for teaching you know it's not a one-way process it's more two-way you know we give our perceptions about the readings and you know she or he you know they pick up from where we left off so it's it's more like you are learning and teaching or like you know putting your perspectives out there um so and the flexibility so, uh, in that uh, way is they sort of uh, this, this small classroom size, um, does it lend to better instructional learning? Does it lend to, to better teaching? I, I think I would personally agree because when you're in a large group of people, you, at least for me, I always used to get distracted in school and stuff, you know, always struggled to pay attention. You know, I never found the classes engaging. But here, college was different for me. I was able to, you know, sit through class without you know, getting distracted. I was, the, the education was very gripping. I would participate. I wanted to learn more, you know, and, you know, very often, you know, they'd say, don't bunk your classes. Like there is no scope for bunking classes here because it's, it's brilliant, you know? Good to know that. So, yeah. yeah. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Medhi. I'll come back to you on a couple of other issues, but I now want to turn to Priyadarshini. Sure. And Priyadarshini, I'm given to understand that JSNH has a wide variety of student mobility programs, including, um, let's say, let's say summer abroad programs or, or semester exchange programs, and even a couple of dual degree programs. Do you want to weigh in on this and let us know what these programs are all about? Uh, sure. Uh, from the first semester, the JSLH faculty and staff make sure that we're given the opportunity to do the best we can and to reach our best potential. To do this, they have made sure to have a very strong international collaboration with the, one of with, with some of the best universities in the world. Uh, JSLH, our school, provides uh, summer and winter school programs from uh, uh, in collaboration with universities like Oxford, Sciences Po, University of Granada in Spain, 
and they give these opportunities right from the first semester. Um, students are offered semester exchange and semester abroad programs when they come to their fifth semester, that is after two years of required uh, education at GSLS. Um, these programs really help the students in expanding their horizons and studying their subjects in detail uh, from the best institutions, whichever they choose. Um, some of these institutions, like, I'll give you some examples, like um, include, they include Sciences Po in France, Queen's Mary College, uh, Queen's Mary University in London, Trinity College, uh, Dublin, Carlton University in Canada, ICLA in Japan, and many more. Uh, so personally, uh, I was also planning to go to Italy for a semester exchange uh, program to the University wait, wait, wait. of Bologna. When were you planning to go? Uh, this semester, in my fifth semester. So I've completed, uh, I'm going to complete my fourth semester. So uh, this coming um, uh, August, I was planning to leave. Um, to uh, Italy, to University of uh, Bologna. And um, because uh, I chose this university because of their intensive economic program and also due to their excellent reputation in the same field. Yes. Um, it's one of the only universities in the world, yeah. yes. Yes. So uh, I want, additionally, I wanted to also learn about the culture of Italy, their economy. And through that program, I wanted to implement all the learnings that I did over there in the Indian context. Um, but unfortunately, due to COVID-19, my plans are almost cancelled now, uh, since Italy is one of the most uh, and worst hit countries. Uh, however, uh, even during these trying times, my professor, my faculty mentor, and my seniors, who all knew about uh, my aspirations to go abroad and study over there, they were all very helpful, and uh, they guided me and made sure that I'm uh, all right and in a good mental um, health state, in a good state of mental health. So in cases like these, I really, I truly realize the importance of a good faculty. And I can assure all of you that we at JSLS have the best faculty a student could ever ask for. Um, well, so, yeah. that's a tall team. But thank you so much, Priya. And I hope to, I, I hope that you will be able to, you know, meet that as uh, that aspiration of going and doing a semester abroad at some point of time. By the way, we've already started getting a few questions from the audience. Um, we will, we do have a few questions that I will throw at. Um, our students and once that's done we will start taking questions from the audience if you have a question about anything relating to to the general school of liberal arts and humanities uh, feel free to ask them right now i will go through each and every question or as many questions as we can within the given time frame um so thank you so much priya i'm quite certain that you actually wanted to go to italy for the food and not for anything else but <laughs> well <laughs> but that I'm is sure an additional aspect of it yeah. you know, amazing amazing faculty as well I want to come back to Param, and Param, I, I noticed that in the in the um, in the JSLH curriculum, there seem to be a number of courses that are called interdisciplinary studies or IED, and this is taught over multiple semesters. Now, I know that JGU calls itself a multidisciplinary university, um, but what does interdisciplinary studies do, and and how do they how do they help in liberal arts and humanities? So. We have this course called Interdisciplinary Seminar, which ca carries along around like three semesters, basically. And the course focuses on a lot of topics from the humanities academia, basically. Like we, we study a lot of courses like anthropology, sociology and economics throughout the entire course structure, basically. And then the course mainly focuses on like connecting personal experiences and real life scenarios with like theoretical studies. So we do a lot of readings like we did Susan Sontag for notes on photography which we connected to like real life real life photographs and right now like when the university shut down we were given an assignment on COVID-19 because COVID-19 like subjects to every single person here we had a vast diversity of thoughts and the professors were like extremely impressed by the variety of thoughts everyone presented because this time we studied economics and anthropology mainly a lot of people focused on how the pandemic has like completely destroyed the economy and some people focused on the government policies of the pandemic how the government's coping with it i myself i focused on like the ill effects on the mental health of people due to the false endorsement of covid 19 on social media so what you're suggesting is that um interdisciplinary seminar it gives you a a wide variety of courses or or philosophies or or approaches really that's what i'm given to understand and that sort of sets the the, the backdrop for you know your second year and your third year is that is that correct right 
All right. So it, with yeah. that, with that, I want to shift to I want to shift to the one of the cornerstones of any any quality liberal arts program anywhere in the world, uh, which is that of majors, right? And and I'll turn to you, Priya, again. Um, yeah. Have you decided upon your major yet? Yeah, I have, in fact. Um, and what so, is, that, yeah. is that economics or psychology? Yeah, my major is in economics now. Economics, right. And how many majors does uh, does JSLH offer as of now? Uh, so I'll just give you uh, a brief introduction to our majors yeah. and uh, right. even our internships because those are really important um, questions that should be addressed. So our program has a wide array of subjects to study and then later choose uh, from for the majors. Uh, we gain a very holistic education by study, uh, studying subjects ranging from history, literature, sociology, uh, to subjects like Paul science, philosophy, economics, international uh, business, uh, and even music, theater, and fine arts. So we really um, study all the subjects that we possibly can. In our third semester, after studying from this exhaustive list of subjects, we're asked to start thinking about our majors. Uh, throughout this process, we're guided by the professors, our faculty mentors, and our seniors. Uh, so during uh, when I was choosing my major, orientation programs were held by professors, and uh, they were uh, asked to sell their subjects to the students. Uh, it was great fun to see the professors, you know, banter, joking, of course, about why students should choose their subjects and all of that. Um, it was all in a very friendly spirit and we were allowed, uh, we were free to talk to the professors and reserve meeting slots with them to talk more about our interests and finding our perfect matches in our uh, majors. Uh, in my case, I was very confused because I love studying everything. Uh, so I tried to narrow it down, but I couldn't really narrow it down that well. I could only narrow it down to four subjects. And when I told my parents, they were really baffled and I couldn't really blame them uh, because for the life of me, I couldn't narrow it down further. So this is where my uh, faculty mentor came in. Uh, in my meetings with her, we listed down my aspirations, my interests, my future options, and of course, my favorites. And I finally narrowed it down to two. And then further, to clarify my doubts, I went and talked to my seniors, and the seniors also uh, held an open house discussion for all of us. And that really made me sure of my major. And uh, finally, and now I've chosen economics, and I'm really happy with it. Um, some students have also uh, also weren't really sure about doing one subject particularly, like just focusing on one subject. So they've gone for a double major, wherein you can combine two subjects and collaborate subjects like really interesting subjects like international business and psychology and yeah. fine arts and literature. And you know, this really gives you the leverage of uh, choosing whatever subjects you want, whatever subjects you're interested in and doing the focus study. And um, another part about, uh, another really good part about choosing GSLS is that uh, even though I have a major, I can choose cross electives from any school that I wanted and right. uh, was interested in. And that has really helped me widen my knowledge base. Uh, and also interact with my seniors and juniors from our school and from the other schools as well. Yeah. Um, does your choice of major also have a bearing on, let's say, the internships that you take up? I mean, I'm assuming um, you guys. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, another aspect of education at JSLS is that they want uh, you to be the best version of yourself. And also in that uh, when you're finding yourself, they really want you to understand what you want. And we also achieve this through the internship programs. Uh, we have uh, uh, an Office of Career Services, uh, which is an organization that helps the students in getting the best internships in the country. So they take the time. They sit with you uh, and they uh, sit down for sessions with all uh, any students who want help and they figure out the interests of the students and then they find the suitable internships for them. And they even uh, put in a good word on behalf of the university if a student wants to apply for any internship that they didn't have a collaboration with yet. So right. OCS really enables students to apply for the best uh, uh, companies in the world um by holding camps or by you know interacting with the companies on a personal basis even now in fact uh during the time of covid we keep getting mails from ocs regarding the companies which are hi hiring interns to work from home so really in this way the entire staff joins hands in creating the best environment and giving the best opportunities to students nice great so uh Tana, i want to turn to you now and it seems to me that 
the JSLH curriculum, the, the liberal arts curriculum at JSLH, um, is structured in a way that is sort of bottom heavy, where I believe, I recall Param saying that you start off very gradually, and then you engage with interdisciplinary studies, and then eventually you decide on a major, or in the case of some other students, they decide on a double major, or they create their own major. And I'm given to understand that by the time you, you graduate, you're supposed to sort of um, have a publishable quality piece of literature or some kind of a research work as is in terms of your thesis. Now, I, I, I recall that, that you have aspirations to go to Harvard Business School, and many of you over here, you guys yes. have aspirations for higher studies abroad. Now, a lot of foreign universities, when they're, when they're looking for master students, they look for the potential to, um, to actually write and write not just in an op-ed piece, but write uh, an academic piece, perhaps. Um, so do you think, so, 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 so do you think you could tell us a little bit more about this, this uh, subject called thesis and, and what does it entail and, and, and whether it helps you out? Um, so your thesis is obviously in your major and JSLH currently offers um, 11 majors plus your um, self-designed option. And once you choose your major um, and you study it for one semester, which is essentially your, your first semester, um, in your fifth semester, which is the starting of your third year, um, you start researching your thesis. Um, the most important part about your thesis is the fact that JSLH ensures that it is of quality that can be published and it is of a certain quality that can be even sent to um, <coughs> colleges abroad. Um, your thesis is essentially between eight to 10,000 words. It's an undergraduate dissertation that you write, um, uh, once again, in your major. And um, I think as most of us have already established, there is a very strong student faculty rapport that's established throughout your years at Jindal and, and at JSLH. And the manner in which your thesis is written is also in a similar manner where you're in constant communication and consultation with faculty, seniors, um, even you know, um, faculty from all over the world perhaps. Um, because my research focuses on um, economics and in um, e uh, economic data, I've had the privilege to actually work with several faculty members, not only from the School of Liberal Arts and Humanities, but also from the School of Law, from um, the School of Government and Public Policy, and even yes. in certain cases, um, faculty with the school, from the School of um, International Affairs. So, at, so while you're writing your thesis, it's not just focused on one sort of subject or one theme. Again, it's a very multi multidisciplinary, extremely layered approach, which is, I think, the strength of um, JSLH and of right. studying the liberal arts at large. And I believe uh, somebody earlier mentioned that, that JSLH students um, have the advantage of taking up elective courses from other schools, of course, and that is really the whole idea of interdisciplinarity at, at JGU. But I want to focus on something that you mentioned, and very particularly, uh, Tanay, uh, I want to focus on the mentoring that, that you guys get at, um, at JSLH. Now, I want to ask Medini again, um, you, we did mention the, the faculty-student relationship and the communication between the, these two sort of you know, stakeholders right. in, in the university. Uh, that that relationship is very very powerful and it's very very influential. Could you tell us a little bit more about the mentoring policy at JSLH? Sure. Yeah. So, like I mentioned previously, we as a community are very close knit. One, because of the number, we are not a large group of people. We are limited to you know per, per batch, which I think is very very helpful because it helps uh, each batch get to know another batch very easily. You know, through like common parties or common debates. We know everybody in the school by at least by name, if not just through like a meetup or like whatever. And I think that this is where the role of the faculty comes in. I have this extremely uh, you know powerful uh, initiative that was introduced in the beginning uh, itself, like when the school was introduced, which is called the faculty mentoring program. So the faculty mentoring program is a way in which. Uh, one student can relationship with a professor over the period of three years based on common interests or common passions. 
so for instance, uh, you know, I'm interested in like literature and research. Accordingly, I will be assigned a professor who is going to stick with me as my mentor for the three years. And while doing so, uh, you know, they help you with your academics. They help you with your uh, your future, you know, like your future aspirations. They help you uh, in your networking processes and not just your professional life, but also in terms of your social and emotional condition on campus. You know, they ensure that your mental health is well. Uh, your academics are going well in case you have any problems they put you on to the right people to address it so this way you always have someone in the administration or in the you know faculty sector of the university to always contact no matter what is happening there's a level of comfort in knowing that there's who you can go up to at any hour any time they are always available for us and right. in addition to the faculty mentoring program we also have the peer mentoring so program um, mainly when you say they're always available for you and I know that you're a, you're a residential campus, right? And I'm given to understand that all faculty members and students either stay on campus or in the surrounding vicinity. So let me ask you this. What was the latest or the last time or the, or the latest time that you got a faculty to, to meet you on campus? How late can it get at night? Okay, so this was, this was like entirely my fault and I take complete responsibility for it, but here's a very funny story. I, I was with this one particular assignment and I, you know like I had a meeting with that particular professor I accidentally missed so I couldn't really attend it and you know she was busy through the rest of the day so at like nine in the night she had like a seminar going on so I attended the seminar which ended at 11 p.m in the night and she was yeah. leaving college at 11 20. so I was like wow. so can you just please talk to me for 20 minutes so you know right after the classroom we had like an informal meeting at 11 in the night so I think that's wow. been like my wildest hour of meeting a professor yeah. So there are faculty student meetings happening at 11.20 at night. Go beat that. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Um, and I think it'll be, it, it kind of highlights the comfort level we share with our professors because, you know, it's not like, oh, this isn't a good time. If you need them, they will be there for you. So, which is very good. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, now, I want to move away from, you know, the seriousness of academics and you know the support structure that you have in terms of faculty mentoring and, and the peer support that you have I want to talk a little bit more about the fun side of, of JSLH right and I want to turn to again Param and Tane um, could you tell us a little bit more about the student life and do you guys have any cultural fests at JSLH or at JGU uh, let me start with Param first all right, so JSLH basically as a community has like a lot of subsidiary violence. Medhani, talk, Medhani spoke about the SAC and I'm going to speak about the SGRC and the Student Council. The SGRC is basically responsible for, as, as the full form suggests, the SGRC is the Student Grievances Readdressal Committee. So it basically focuses on the problems of the students and it's also like, it has a cell called events. Basically, mm -hmm. so events, the events committee is responsible for organizing a lot of JSLA specific events which create like a ice breaking session for all of the batches to like bond and like talk to each other and like meet and then I'm a part of the student council so like I'll give you a little insight on the student council as well so the JSLA student council basically focuses on like picking up issues of the students and like raising them in front of the admin and like taking decisions in favor of the student body. I'm a CR, so I'm a subsidiary part of the student council. I'm not exactly a part of the student council, but like I get to right. attend the meetings. And the best part about the JSA student council is that there is no hierarchy. Uh, an opinion raised by a CR like me versus the opinions raised by the vice president who also ends up to be my peer mentor and a really close friend will be given like equal position in the meetings. And I, I, I expect a lot of people from the incoming batch to apply for the student council because it's a really good opportunity to like meet your seniors and like bond with everyone. And right. I think you can go for the CR position in the first year and further on was from the second year, you can go for the secretary positions right. and other plenty things. I'm given to understand there are plenty of leadership opportunities that you would get as a JSNA student, right? Um, Tame, I want to ask you about. Um, is, is there a culture of fests on campus? Um, and, 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 and do you guys and do you guys participate in these cultural yeah. fests? Um, so we actually at Jindal, um, we have about four fests that happen every year, which is, I mean, we have two main festivals. One of them is Bisramil, which is a cultural festival that normally happens in October. And we have Magnus, which is our sports festival that normally happens around March. 
and we have right. other um sort of things happening all throughout and um i can say i've been closely involved with college festival since my first year be it you know from volunteering to becoming one of the most sort of i wouldn't say integral but a part of the core committee of um organizing oh. festival and building on what param had to say about understanding leadership um college festival also um teach you how to deal with people how to deal with people with various temperaments to deal with the administration um to, to deal with your skills of negotiation in terms of prices in terms of you know artists that come and perform so i think um other than academic jslh and jgu both provide an extremely holistic environment for learning be it in the classroom and outside the classroom right thank you very much then it looks it seems like um that jg that jgu and jslh are are vibrant uh, and 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 can cultural centers um i want to have this one last okay so priya you have a you have a point to make hang on priya i don't think you're audible no i don't think you're audible priya i'm sorry um i i want to turn while priya oh Please, there she is yeah, now get back on Wonderful. Uh, yeah, Go I ahead. just wanted to add on a little bit and tell um, all the incoming batch about you know the events that are held, particularly at JSLS. So I'll be very brief about it since we're running out of time. Um, we have uh, so I am one of the heads of the committee that uh, Param mentioned. It's called SGRC events, uh, and we have a specific one for JSLS. And uh, so uh, we have a lot of fun in organizing events. And since it's a cross school and batch organization led entirely by students of JGU, um, we can basically decide on the funding, uh, the way we organize, and what events we want to organize. So when you all come in, and hopefully if this uh, COVID-19 situation subsides, uh, we'll get to attend a lot of uh, events like Halloween. Diwali, uh, games nights, movie nights. Um, there's a special event called students versus faculty sports events, uh, and all of those, which are like, uh, which will really help you um, become friends with your seniors and also interact with the faculty members as well. So, um, and we also, and to make sure that everyone is safe and secure inside the campus during all the events and fests like this, uh, we also have an SGR, SGRC security team. That works closely with the JGU admin and the Haryana police. And I think Meduni wants to add, like, uh, wanted to add a little more on it. Right. Well, thank you very much for that, Priya. That is a very interesting insight. But um, I want to close out this this part of the session, um, and then we'll move to the audience questions. And there are quite a few, quite a few questions that have come up by now. Um, you know, we are at the end of the day, we are in rural Haryana. We are in North India. And a, a number of questions come from parents asking me, um, "Is it safe there, particularly for women?" Right now, I, 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 I'd like Medini and, and 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 Priya to sort of weigh in on this question: that um, what is the situation in terms of safety and and security, particularly for women on campus? So when I first came to Jindal, it was it was a question everyone would ask me. And and to be very honest, I am from Bangalore. I have never been to the north, so you know the the, the cultural divide is real because I've never lived up there. I don't know the culture. I don't know anything. So I was like a South Indian girl who ended up in North India, and you know like that one of those stories. So uh, I think that once you enter college, you see that they have taken a lot of precautions. to ensure that within college everyone is felt uh, you know safe you there's never time even if you're walking around campus at 3 am there is no feeling of like you i mean you feel safe sorry you always feel safe there are cctv cameras installed at every uh, you know spots on campus you have security guards doing rounds and not just male security guards there are a balanced number of female and male security guards throughout campus uh, it's well lit i think that's extremely important uh, the campus is well lit and it is uh, you know it's constructed in such a way where most of it is free so uh, it's it's not i mean i know when you talk about rural haryana there's automatically an image in most of our heads you know because it's not delhi it's not haryana you're in the middle of nowhere but as a girl i would like to say that there is no reason for anyone to worry because 
college is very, very safe. There's a strong gate pass system, which means you can only leave university with the approval of your parents. Uh, they have like strict uh, curfew timings for with when you go into your hostel, when you enter campus, there's like, you know, helpline numbers that you can always contact and adding on the student council plays a huge role in ensuring safety of the children in case there's any violation or, you know, a problem that anybody faces. The student council is there ensuring that they receive all the help they need. So, yeah. Right. Wonderful. Uh, Priya, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, we also, um, so when I first came to the campus, my parents were concerned about how I was going to go from and to Delhi. So uh, at that time, my father was posted in Delhi, and so he wanted to make sure that I was always safe all the time. And so for that, our university has uh, a reliable cab service, and also uh, they have employed buses um, just for the students to go to and from the metro station. Um, and so that was also one of the aspects that I felt that made me feel very safe, because um, the only uh, point of duress for my parents was that, um, how are we going to let you transport from uh, your college um, in the middle of nowhere and then go to the metro station where you feel a little at home. So um, I felt, uh, and uh, all the staff members, the staff members in the buses, they uh, are extremely helpful. And if you call them up and if you tell them that you get here, you're a little late, can you please wait for us? They always like uh, wait for you and they make sure that you're always safe. Um, so that's another point I wanted to add, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, all of you. I just wanted to use this opportunity to um, put forth a few basic things about JSLH and how the courses run, what the student life is like, and what are the activities on campus. I am now going to move towards questions that we have already received from the audience, and I'm going to start with the most important question that has been asked so far. It's been asked by Subhashri Pani, and she asks, how is the food there? I'm opening this to anyone to answer. All right, Tana. Um, so the food is sort of, the food is great, first of all. Um, it's broadly in two parts. There's the mess and then there's the food court. So the mess, and, I mean, it's, it's college food, but it's great compared to most colleges that I've been to and, and I've visited. Um, the food in the mess is vegetarian. Although they do serve egg in the mess, uh, except on Tuesdays. And um, by the way, the Chole Bature on Sundays is infamous, so you shouldn't miss that. Um, but yeah. um, you, you also have the food court, which um, has restaurants like Domino's, Moti Mahal, Boko, Subway. And um, so you always have, and non-veg is available there. So you do have um, a wide sort of. Variety. So there's a mix of veg and non-veg on I think, and, and and that's fairly good. Medley? Yeah, so uh, I think in addition to that, uh, since many of us come from different parts of the country, we practice different festivals and, you know, we practice different cultures, which several times includes the food we eat. And one good thing about Sodexo, who is uh, in charge of our catering, is during these times they adhere to the needs of the, the particular like the people who actually you know practice in things like this so say for navratri or something like that we have a separate section only for those who would like to you know eat those like that particular food which i think is brilliant because it it just highlights how we how the community includes a sense of like belongingness inclusiveness you know everyone is thought of and heard um right. And we have like variety. It's not you don't walk in and see one curry, one rice. You know, you have like options to eat what you want to eat, which is right. brilliant. Right. All right, I want to move on to the next question very, very quickly. And um, I have a couple of questions from Nayana Mukherjee who asked, firstly, do you have any courses on fine arts amongst others? Does anyone want to take this question? Do you guys have courses on fine arts? Uh, Tana? Um, so, at um, GSLH, other than the course, um, expressive arts course, we do have about five electives every semester, which are offered by various faculties throughout um, JGU, which are open to students. We have courses like Open Studio 1 and 2. We have, I mean, a, a course I did called From Culture to Installation, 
we have one more base entirely on sketching we have one more base entirely on oil painting for instance um and at jslh we also have something called a long um artist residency program where every semester an artist comes to campus and take sort of courses throughout the semester right so plenty of so plenty of options for somebody uh, wanting to choose a uh, a fine art a fine art major uh, priya there's a question for you um yeah. in terms of the majors and naina mukherjee asks in which semester do students have to select their major um so the selection so you have to start thinking about selecting your majors in the third semester so um the professors really guide you throughout the entire process um so you end up selecting your majors by the end of the third semester when you studied all the subjects and um, almost in the last two weeks you have to give your um uh, you have to uh, give them the final answer for your major but um i think we can also um change for a particular duration of time for about like 3 to 4 weeks you can change your major after you, you've seen that you don't like it or you like it so there's a lot of flexibility in that manner and if there's a special case there's always our professors and the uh, academic uh, head uh, professor jani who will always help you out any problems or situations that you face or you have so yeah thank you so much um there is a question from monisha sen and she asks wondering about your plans for the next semester for the new batch are the plans to start august online well monisha i can tell you right now that as per the ugc uh, notification that came out last week um we yeah. have plans to start our our classes on the 3rd of august which is the first monday of august for all the batches except for the incoming batch and as per the, the ugc regulations uh, we will be starting our incoming batch on the 1st of september now this is what we plan for so far given the government directions of course if the government decides to change its its directions later on we will we will comply with the government's um orders um avanti bakre asks what are some of the examples that you of the courses that you have in your first years now so param you you were mentioning about your first year and your experiences in the first year could you tell us could you list out the courses that you did in your first two semesters we we have like basic introductory courses in the first a uh, your base all right we seem to be just the first semester first year will basically give you like a overview of what what we're going to study in like the coming years so we've got courses like ai to the fall we have and then history and then sociology other courses which like give you an overview of everything basically right all right so a wide variety of courses across across uh, liberal arts and humanities wonderful um <clears throat> So let me quickly switch to uh, another question, um, and Utsha Vinod Menon, uh, she asks that she's very confused about internships. Let's say you're majoring in literature, what would your internship look like? Would anyone want to take up this question? Mm. A major in literature, what kind of a uh, an internship do you think you'd be you'd be taking up? All right, Parab. So like my last internship was basically I worked under this research committee, this research body basically. So I was their writing assistant and like their research assistant. So that was that can like possibly relate to literature majors maybe. A research right. and a writing assistant. Right. Go on, Priya. Yeah. So um, uh, if you go to the OCS, that is Office of Career Services, for any queries that you have, they list out a number of internships. um uh, they can be from a uh, home or in a particular organization um and you can also uh, do your internship under a particular professor if you approach uh, him or her uh, so um currently we have uh, so one of our professors professor mal who uh, the professor for literature uh, he offered uh, a somewhat of a six month internship uh, for students who do research for a particular paper uh, and work under him uh just as them so that would be somewhat of a lear great learning opportunity and there's also internship opportunities uh, in the media studies so we have a school of uh, school for journalism so uh, we can always contact their companies and you know work under them 
So for example, a, a friend of mine who's doing literature right now, uh, she worked for the Republic TV and she worked for Hindustan Times. Uh, and she uh, was a reporter there. So I think all of these, um, and uh, if not that, all, an NGO will always help. Uh, like you can always apply to an NGO and you can get experiential learning by also working for the society. So that um, you have a lot of opportunities and you'll get to know more once you start talking to the OCS officers. Um, right. So a large variety, yeah. Internship, internship opportunities available, not just within JSNH and the, and the faculty member, but also beyond and you know, let's say media houses or publishing houses, all of that is available. Um, I have a very interesting question. Now, I note that psychology is one of the most popular majors at JSLH. Varun yeah. Isarani asks, are there field trips for psychology? And I'm guessing with the nods on your head, the short answer is yes, there are field trips in psychology. I'm gonna quickly move on to another, to another question. Um, let's say, um, right, I'm just going to quickly go through, all right, so let me talk about, let's stick to, to career services and the Office of, of Career Service, which provides career counseling as well. Um, here's a question, a very, a very pertinent and very difficult question, I, I, I believe, asked by Ayush Kundu, um, who asks, what kind of career counseling services do you get uh, following graduation, especially now? that a majority of graduating students are left in limbo with regards to employment and higher studies given the COVID-19 situation. What kind of careers counseling have you been given over the last few months while we have been under lockdown? Does anyone want to answer this extremely difficult question? All right, Tane. So as Priya spoke, um... OCS has been constantly sending us job offers um, across fields, be it in business, be it in economics, be it in literature. Um, more than that, I think, um, although it's not, you can always write to them and appointment, but they've also, what they've been doing recently, um, especially for my batch, is organizing workshops on CV writing, on SOP writing, on form um, for um, colleges abroad, how to write your SOP, and more than that, um, they also have internship fairs or job fairs which are organized once a year, or rather once a semester, where you're able to approach organizations and hand in your CV. Right. Maybe uh, I noticed your hand was up. Do you want to add to this? All right, maybe mainly hasn't heard us. Um, all right, let's move on to another question. No, not a problem at all. Um, I have a couple of questions from Josh Punjabi, um, who asks, how does a semester abroad work when you're going to a university that doesn't offer a liberal arts program? Now, I'm given to understand that all of the university, the international partners that liberal arts program has, they all have liberal arts programs. Um, apart from that, do you just study your major at a, a semester exchange or are you allowed to study pretty much anything that you want? Can you take us to this? All right, Priya. Um, so uh, the way the semester uh, abroad class exchange works is that, yes, we have collaborations with universities which uh, primarily teach liberal arts and humanities all around the world. Uh, or are accommodating for students who um, are interested in the same subject. So uh, they also have a wide um, range of subjects that they uh, offer. So just like our university, uh, we if we go over there, actually depends from in, uh, each university. So for example, my university um, that I wanted to go to, University uh, of Bologna, uh, for example, they offered a, a very strong economics program, but I could also select other uh, I could also select subjects from other schools uh, again it's a very interdisciplinary uh, kind of a program uh, and some of my friends who want to go to Japan uh, uh, to ICLA uh, they uh, uh, they actually went so one of my seniors she went and she wanted to do international business but then she also end up uh, ended up taking you know fine arts as a subject 
because that was something she was really interested in. So again, just like Jindal, uh, you get you get to choose your subjects, and you have the liberty of doing that, and you can make uh, you can make up a combination of however you like. Um, so I guess that's another yeah, that's right. advantage. Well, we've got a couple of questions from a lady by the name of Sneha Ramesh who asks, uh, can you speak a little bit about the extracurricular activities? Now, Sneha, the extracurricular activities at JGU are across all schools. So there are over 50 student-led clubs and societies, uh, starting from um, social service to human rights, to music, to, to art, to performing arts, to visual arts, to theater. Um, sports in Haryana is a big deal, and we seem to have one of the best sporting facilities that any university yeah. could ask for. A full-fledged cricket ground, two football grounds, volleyball courts, basketball courts, tennis courts, badminton courts, and even an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Um, Sneha Ramesh also asks, are there any facilities to promote the mental health of students? Perhaps a counselor or therapist. Now, I can tell you that, that JGU has a, a, a center for student wellness, uh, and they do have counselors and therapists on call 24 seven. Um, I want yeah. to move very quickly um, to um, another question that's, we're almost out of time. So I, I want to end on a, on a lighter note. Um, Utra Vinod Menon again asks, I would like to know more about life in the hostel. Anyone want to venture uh, uh, a few of your stories? Okay, me. Yeah. Sorry, I lost a bit of my connection, which is why I couldn't answer your previous question. But life on campus, in one word, is it's amazing. Uh, I mean, in your hostels also, I mean, sorry, my bad. I think life, see, you, we, each of us have like two other roommates who you can either switch after your first year or your second year, or you can keep them to the, you know, for your three years or whatever. And it's beautiful. You have relationships there. You meet new people. You know, you go from door to door. You get to know your neighbors. And we actually have in hostels Zumba classes, yoga classes, and you know, movie nights within one hostel. So you get to meet, uh, you know, your seniors and juniors, not just from the school of liberal arts, but from other schools as well. So I'm meeting a senior from, say, fourth year law, or I'm meeting a junior from your law and this is very important because it not only creates a great not only becomes like a great platform for discussion but also builds your networking process your you know your confidence just you know in being in your in the university and everything uh the, the hostel life is actually very nice uh we you know it's clean it's taken care of well we have wonderful support very supportive wardens too you know who are a call away in case anything goes wrong so yeah the hostel life is it's Beautiful. All right. Um, last question, right? And I, I want to end again, like I said, I want to end on a fun note. But I know for a fact that some of you are graduating this year and that you're in your third years. And I wish your graduation could have been done on, 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 on campus and that you could have spent your final semester on campus. Dia Sharma asks, what would the third year students miss most about JSLH? Oh. Any, so, any take on I have Tanay. three. Hang on, hang on, Mindy. I'll go with Tanay first and then Mindy. Yeah. yeah. I think I think what we're all going to miss is classroom four and Sandeep Bhaiya. Because I think classroom four is like our adda where, you know, all of JSLH gathers and we study. And Sandeep Bhaiya is our very well-known Netcafe Bhaiya who just knows our orders by heart the moment we enter the mess. Yeah. Right. So spaces and people, that's really, really what, what's important yes. to JSLH students. Mainly, you had a point to make? I think I, uh, obviously, apart from the usual, like my friends and my routine, I think I'm going to miss the dogs on campus. I have built a great relationship with the campus dogs through my three years. You know, they are, they not only, they're just there as a time pass, but they help you. It's like you get dog therapy on campus or pup therapy on campus. You know, we have like an animal welfare society. So anyway, I'm really going to miss the dogs. I think I'm going to miss the skies of Sony, but you will see the most magical and colorful skies on some days and it's breathtaking. Yeah. So I think in addition to the dogs, I think it's just going to be sitting in my balcony or sitting on the field and just looking at those beautiful sunsets. It's something I'm always going to hold on to. Right. So, yeah. All right. Great. On that note, guys, thank you so much, all four of you, for coming online and doing this today. I'm sure you've been able to clear up at least some of the doubts of all these people who came on board. 
for all of you attendees. Thank you so much for being such a great audience. Thank you so much for asking really insightful and incisive questions. Now, we weren't able to answer all of your questions today, but rest assured that we will answer your questions individually by email over the next few days. With that, thank you very much for joining us. Please do follow our, 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 our social media handles for further updates on our webinars. We keep doing webinars at least two or three a day, um, which will involve not just liberal arts, but the other eight schools at the Jinnah Global University as well. With that, thank you again to our panelists. This is Arya Majumdar, Dean of Admissions and Outreach at OP Jinnah Global University. Thank you very much.